Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay Cruz and welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm gonna finally give you my updated thoughts on the Schecter Nick Johnston guitar. Let's get it. So if you don't know, I'll link you to the video that appears right up here. This is when I unboxed this guitar. It's about six months ago now that I've had this guitar more or less. I'm gonna give you my true thoughts in this video. Did this guitar grow on me? Did it sit on the shelf and not get used? We'll discuss everything. So I did go over most of the guitar's features in my last video. We have a single coil, single coil humbucker, a two pin strat style trem system, a five way selector switch, only a volume and a tone knob, a roasted maple neck that is to die for, locking tuners, which I'm not sure if I mentioned in my last video. One of my favorite parts of this guitar is the exposed truss rod adjustment on the lower end of the neck. Now I am gonna show you some sounds in just a bit, uh, but I want to highlight one or two features that I don't think I really did a good job with highlighting in my first video. The one thing that I completely forgot to cover in my unboxing video was the humbucker. It actually splits through this push-pull thing here. Pulling the tone switch up or out essentially splits the humbucker, turning it into a single coil pickup and then pushing it back down takes it right back into humbucker mode. The only modification that I made to this guitar, which I think is quite visible, are the tone and volume knob. The reason I made that adjustment was because I found it very difficult to use the strat style knobs for that push pull feature. Just having to dig my nails underneath the guitar was a little bit too, I don't know, just very uncomfortable for me. Since putting the Gibson style knobs on here, it's just so much easier to actually lift and push back down. It's just a much better choice. And I think aesthetically it looks kind of cool as well. But the craziest part, and I did highlight this in the other video, is just how insanely smooth the neck is, even to this day, after having it for this long and playing it as often as I do. Um, very little resistance has built up. I will say some resistance has, right, from the natural oils of my hands, but it's still the smoothest, AKA fastest neck I have ever played. I just wanna show you some of the sounds that I get from each pickup and each pickup combination. Then I'm gonna add some reverbs and delays, even some grit so you could hear these pickups in action with some of the stuff that I like to play on a weekly basis. After the audio clips, we'll come back. I'll give you the breakdown. My pros, my cons on this guitar, and my true thoughts after owning it for six months. <laughs>
So let's be honest, why did you stumble on this guitar? There's a very good chance that you're in the market for an affordable Strat that sounds good and plays good. Number one, I love the look of the neck. The roasted maple is beautiful. I love the fact that it's got a split humbucker in the bridge. It makes the guitar super versatile. I actually really love the stock pickups. I have zero desire to change them. The bridge, the tremolo or the vibrato bar, whatever you call it, um, it, it's amazing. It feels great. It's very musical. It's it's more musical than your traditional Strat style bar. I mentioned this in the first video as well, the input jack. It's so genius to me to have it on the side like you would find on a Telecaster or a Gibson guitar. And also the volume and tone knob, the fact that there is only one allows you to use it for every pickup. I just think it's just simpler and makes more sense. And it also lowers the volume knob just a little bit. I've always had an issue when playing strats where I'll be strumming and I'll accidentally hit the volume knob and lower my, my guitar. This guitar, I haven't had that problem at all. So we talked about pros, but are there any cons? It's funny how some of the stuff I love about this guitar, I also have certain issues with. And this could be me being nitpicky, but I do want to be honest with you so that you can make an educated decision on whether or not this guitar works for you. We talked about the neck, how beautiful it was that roasted maple, but one of the complaints that I've heard other guitarists have, and I can now relate a little bit, are the inlays. They are difficult to see. If you're the type of guitarist that heavily depends on having visibility on those inlays, you're gonna struggle on this guitar. But speaking of the neck, the profile of the neck, as I mentioned, I'm a more vintage radius guy. I would have loved the neck to be chunky or to have an option to have a chunky style neck. Now I did mention how much I love the vibrato bar, and I like that you can use an Allen key or whatever it is to adjust the tension on the bar. However, I've seen other manufacturers use like a screw on system versus a, a, a Allen key adjustment. And I think I would prefer that. Here's why. If I were in a live situation and I felt that my vibrato bar was becoming loose throughout the set, I'm not going to be able to get an Allen key and make an adjustment on that. If I were heavily using the bar and not being able to adjust it in mid set would be a little frustrating. However, I find myself still utilizing this guitar all the time, more so for those pristine, clean sounds. The two and four position on a Strat style guitar with single coils, there really is nothing like it. There is a very specific sound, very focused, uh, there, it is top end, but it's not too piercy. It's pristine. It's beautiful. I look for that when I'm recording clean guitars. I pick up that guitar. When I when I have ideas that I want to lay down or stuff that uh, I'm writing, I pick up that guitar. This guitar brand new will cost you just under $1,000. And I believe that if I were comparing it directly to, let's just say, a Fender guitar, it would probably play like their higher end American models, their $2,000 range style guitar. So the fact that you can get that kind of quality for half the price to me is a no-brainer and I would definitely pull the trigger on this thing. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this follow-up video. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts on this guitar, some of the tones that I uh, am able to get from this guitar. I really, really enjoy them, but I want to know what you think of them. Let me know if you own this guitar and your personal experiences utilizing it. While you're down there, please do all the things that help the channel grow, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you get an alert every single time I upload a video. Check out some of the affiliate links that I have in the description box below. If you want to donate directly to the channel, you can do so by clicking the thanks button that YouTube now includes in all of my videos. Thanks again for watching and until next week.